Welcome to Electron Line. Our next property, property number two, is called the time scaling property. And that property does really tell us something about the Fourier transform. So what that means is, if we take the Fourier transform of an input function where we have a constant multiplied times the time variable t, then the Fourier transform will be 1 over that constant, we need to take the absolute value sign of it, times the Fourier transform of the frequency divided by that constant. Now that's interesting. First of all, if we increase the frequency in the time domain, the result of that when we take the Fourier transform is that we'll have a smaller amplitude by that factor. So if this is equal to 10, we'll have 1 10 the amplitude. And if this is equal to 10, then that also means that we slow down the frequency in the frequency domain. So 10 times the time here will be 1 10 the frequency of our Fourier transform. So what that means is that it will lower the Fourier transform graphically, and we'll show you an example of that later in a different video, and then it will also spread the Fourier transform outward as well. So we'll show you what that looks like. But first of all, we want to show you mathematically how we can show that this is indeed correct. So we're going to take the Fourier transform of this input function, which is equal to this in our standard format. Now we're going to make a substitution. We're going to let x equal at and dx equal a times dt, which means that dt will then be equal to dx divided by a. So let's make those substitutions. So this would then be equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of at. Well, instead of at, we'll write x. So we have f of x and then e to the minus i t will be, uh, let's see here, t will be x over a, right? So t will be equal to x over a. So that gives us omega divided by a times t. And instead of dt, we'll have to write dx over a. Now things are beginning to make shape. We can take the a outside the integral sign. So this becomes equal to 1 over a times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of f of x times e to the minus i omega over a times t. Let's see, whoa, wait a minute. I don't want a t there. I want the t is being replaced by x over a. So this is an x. This is no longer a t. So this is now x. And then we have a dx. Now this here looks like our standard form of the integral for a Fourier transform. And the result of that will simply be that we'll get the Fourier transform of this, which gives us the Fourier transform of omega over a. So this can now be written as 1 over a times the Fourier, of the Fourier transform of omega over a. And that's exactly what we had over here. Now the only difference is they do want to take the absolute value because of, after all, you can't have a negative amplitude. So you want to make that a positive value. If that's a negative value, all we need to do is bring the amplitude down. So if this was the negative value right here, negative constant, we want to take the absolute value sign here because we want to bring the amplitude down. And so this is also, again, a very useful property. We'll see an example of that in the next video, and then we'll show you a video with the graphical representation of that because the time scaling does reveal something interesting about the different properties of the Fourier transform. So stay tuned, but at least here's another nice property that we can deal with, and you make use out of it to find some, uh, to make it a lot easier to find the Fourier transform of some input functions. And that's how it's done.